sure that Buddy appreciated it, you know. And Buddy's told us a couple times there, you know, to keep it up and that, you know, we're doing, you know, a good job and stuff. So it's awesome to have had the honor to, you know, hear words like that from such a, you know, from the founder of, you know, the godfather. The founder <laughs> right, of the feast, right. as Martin calls him. Every, every time we're uh, up there, Martin is uh, we're giving it up for the founder of our feast, you know. <laughs> but really, that's what it is. And that, that's what's such an honor about having him having a place like that and us being a, a, a really, really young band, you know, on the, on the scene, you know, there, you know, really. Mm-hmm. Um, there's not a lot of young, young, young bands. And so for us to be there, it's, it's, it's great, you know, and, I, and I'm glad we're all really thankful that Buddy has that place and has given us that platform because there's really, there, you know, there's not a lot of places like it. Well, there's there's a lot of deja vu in our, our lives, like me and Bobby and Martin. We have that happen to us all the time. And to go back to your question about, you know, fainting, it was nerve-wracking, but at the same time it was comforting, you know. Like there's something mm-hmm. so familiar about Legends and about Buddy Guy and and about Greg, you know. That um, it it just seems so natural the way life has unfolded in some ways, you know. So on one hand, it was like, wow, Buddy's getting on stage. This is absolutely insane. But, they, but on the other hand, it was super like, you know, comforting, <laughs> you know. Um, so it was, yeah. it was it was a weird experience. It was yeah. I mean, it, I guess it, it just it feels like at home. There's nothing. I, there's nothing. There was nothing nervous about it. I mean, I honestly, when you're saying fainting. No, it wasn't like that. It was almost like you know, a long time coming kind of feeling. Like I mean, because I mean, this, this, there's no way around it. I mean, to, to to I would have fainted had it had been a complete, complete surprise. But I mean, we our whole lives have been nothing, you know, but, but preparing for these moments and wanting to play and do what we're doing. I mean, and and, and being on stage with Buddy Guy is something that you know I have visualized since I was a teenager. You know. Yeah, I really yeah. have. It's been something I've visualized. I've thought about it. You know, I mean, you have and to you visualize made, things. You that made things it happen. happen. If you if you build it, they will come. So there you go. <laughs> well, no, you know, this is a true story. But not like people really realize it. But well, like Michael Jackson, yeah. before Thriller was recorded, he put um, on his mirror. He actually had a, like a note to himself that he was going to, that he was recording and working on the number one all time selling record. He literally wow. looked at it every single day, you know, and, and visualized this. And, you know, you have to meditate on these things and, you know, focus like that. Make it so. Make it so. Yeah. And it's not just a dream. I mean, it's something that you have to visualize and you have to put into action, you know. It's not just like, you know, it's visualizing isn't just sitting there and, like, thinking about it, you know. Yeah, like, that's, well, the whole, that's the whole reason. We, right. We've Definitely. Done our, you know. Now, but, I have to ask yeah. you guys, do you know who Johnny Lang is? Oh, yeah, I mean, of course, because, you know, I mean, immediately right when he get burst onto the scene was, you know, back when uh, Buddy Guy, he had a, a a duet, a little thing was called, they did a song called Midnight Train on Buddy Guy's album, Heavy Love. And that was, you know, when we were really, that was a few years into it for us where we had had been playing. And at that point, we were, you know, we were getting tickets to see Buddy whenever we could. We weren't, weren't old enough to go jam in the club or anything like that, but we were playing a lot. You know, and uh, you know, watching him when we could. Um, yeah, I've only just discovered him actually last month, believe it or not. Um, he was going to play at uh, the Arcata Theater in uh, St. Charles, and I get the you know newsletter from the Arcata Theater saying who their upcoming guests are. And the owner of the theater had written on there in these huge letters, oh, my God, I can't believe it. We got Johnny Lang, Johnny Lang, Johnny Lang going on and on. And I'm like, okay, so who is this guy? And he had a video on there of Johnny, and I listened to it and found out more. And here I found out that he played with Buddy, and he's done it often, and he's this huge guy and played with all these other blues, famous blues people. And I, I says, oh, my God, i got to check this out. Listen to more of his music, and I'm absolutely hooked on him now too. Well, it's funny. Like when I first heard him, it, like it was back when I was probably like 16, and and he was really young at the time. Johnny Lang, when he first, you know, got on the scene, and but he had, had right. a couple, you know, a couple songs that were, you know, pretty big hits. I know he did like a Good Morning Little Schoolgirl cover, and uh, but he had another song called Rack 'Em Up that, you know, the pool song. And I remember actually, it, I, it would come on in the pool hall that we would all hang out here. Yeah. Uh, when we were younger, we'd all go and uh, it wasn't probably the place for a bunch of 16-year-olds. But, yeah. Um, 
Um, <laughs> but I do remember that song, you know, that coming on. I, I think the album was called Lie to Me. I, I, I don't remember. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, yeah, I won't. I but, uh, <laughs> well, speaking of yeah, albums, yeah. you guys you guys released Once Upon a Time in the South Loop, and I'd like to go ahead and play a song from that and then, you know, talk about the album and the songs that are on it. So if you can hold on for a minute. Cool. Okay, thank you. I'm going to play When I Say I Love You.
tell you what I told Mike. I think that's one heck of a sexy song, and I should be talking to you in my May West voice and telling you guys to come up and see me sometime. <laughs> that is, that's a, hey, that is that, that is a great way of putting it. I bet you I'm not. I'm gonna bet that Michael can is gonna elaborate on on what you just said, like in depth. Wait, hold on. I, I you know what? You guys were breaking up a little bit. I, Michael, I a little bit of that. She said that, that When I Say I Love You is a very sexy song. I heard that, but then I well, didn't that's hear all, what yeah. you were elaborating on. Just I, said, Drew, I said, I'm, I'm willing to bet anything that you're, you can, are, can and are ready and willing to elaborate on what she just said. Oh, just on the song. Okay. Um, uh, no, on what she just said about, the, the, the sex, about it being sexy. Well, I, I, that's very flattering. That's <laughs> very flattering. Um, <laughs> I uh well let's see here. When I say I love you, that's like the first song I wrote. I mean, I tried writing songs a couple times. But Mike, Mike, no, seriously though, what I'm trying to get at, I'm what I'm looking for for you to answer is, is like when you're talking, uh, you know, the, the buddy guy thing, like in songs that just being sexy, you know, overall. But talking about nowadays, like. You, well, what you're listening to, that's where I was getting at with it. Because well, we've had conversations about just that, you know. Well, uh, you know, the thing about, well, I like the way Jimmy Page says it. He says that music has to have sex and it has to have attitude and it has to have, there was one other thing, I can't remember. <laughs> but, you know, um, <laughs> nevertheless, I agree with him completely. But here's the thing with modern music. It's over the top with modern music. You know, you got like hip-hop especially, you know, it's like, there's no there's no mystique or like mystery behind it. It's all just like blunt and and vulgar sometimes and just wrong, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Whereas like old blues music, you know, like Buddy Guy always talks about it at, at the club, you know, about how, uh, you know, because he'll get on on stage fairly regularly. If he's if he's in town, he makes a point to try to get on. But um, when he gets up there, he always talks about. How uh, you know the radio today? It, it, you know, it's everybody's blunt, and there's no you know. Whereas blues music back in the day, he it took him forever to find out what BB King meant when uh, in the song "Sweet Little Angel," you know, where there's a uh, what's the word? Um, you know, I, I got a sweet little angel, and I love the way she spreads her wings. You know, Buddy Guy said he didn't figure out what that meant until he was in his teens, until he was like 16. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you go like the, the, those songs back in the day. Yeah, you, you, I mean, you had more imagination, so, right. being a little more discreet, in it, you know. So you know, not that there's anything like that. And when I say I love you, but <laughs> um, I just, it's just the overall point that you know you can you can attract you know people with. Subtlety. You don't always have to be like, you know, uh, vulgar about it. No, but I mean, no, there's, there, there really is, though. I mean, I think that was a good uh, adjective used to describe the song. I mean, there is a lot of emotion in it, you know. It is a, well, yeah, a well, sexy true. song, I guess. It's, well, for number one, it's genuine. And I think that if there's one thing I've learned about songwriting, when I used to try to write about, like, the first few songs I tried to write were basically just about ideas. They weren't necessarily about experiences. And I think that's why it was so uh so such a failure, you know. It was just uh, <laughs> it was a wreck. But um, you know, the the songs that I've written that I that I really like are always the songs that um that I can relate to. But you know, the next challenging part, when I say I love you is very specific, but just generally with songwriting, it's a challenge to try to write a song from an experience, but leave it vague enough to where people can relate to it how they need to, you know, because right. um, you don't always necessarily want to make it all about you. But um, when I say I love you, it's definitely about me. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that was, uh, 